We're on the road again and welcome to Denmark. This is a country I've wanted to revisit ever since I went as a kid, poor, some 30 odd years ago. And for good reason, I've never brought the camera here and it's a country full of amazing landscape scenes. I'm gonna spend the next four days touring the country, both in the wild and in the city to see what we can capture with the kit. And coming to kit, what have I brought with me? Well, I've got a bag full of OM system kit. I know you guys wanted to see some more OM system content and I'm gonna deliver. Now, my aim for this trip is to travel light, really light. So I've got an OM5, I've got an OM1, which I'm filming with, filming with now. I've got a very lightweight tripod that is at risk of falling over right now because it is a little bit windy out here. And I've got an array of lenses, including one of my newest lenses, which might be one of my all-time favorite lenses as well. I want to talk more about the kit as we go on through the video. But first of all, let's get cracking, and thank you for joining us. Okay, so let's have a little run through of some of the lenses that I've brought. First up is the 40 to 150 f4. It is so light, but gives an equivalent focal length of 80 to 300. That's just insane in a lens this size. I've got the 12 to 45, which is filming on the OM1 at the moment. I've also got this, which is, as I said, my newest lens is the 8 to 25 f4 Pro weather sealed and the thing with OM system cameras is because of the two times crop factor you always seem to want to shoot far away using a longer focal length because it gets you so much closer to your subject but actually with OM system you can shoot wide too and this delivers an effective focal length of 16 to 50 which I think is going to be amazing when I head into the city and start doing some architectural photography so it's great for the outdoors as well and great for nature but in nature, I tend to shoot longer focal lengths. In the city, I tend to shoot wider. But it's an amazing lens, it's so tiny, and um, it arrived literally the morning before I was heading off to come here, so arrived just on time. So let's take some shots and see what it can do. couple of things about this 825 and how I like to use it. First of all, the reason that it's so small is that it has a collapsing mechanism. You simply twist it all the way in and it sort of reduces its overall length and that makes it easier to transport. Secondly, when I'm taking a wide angle shot, I try and use the corners of the frame to add value to the frame, to the overall image. So I will include, in this case, a lovely fence with some um, berries coming out of the uh, wood there. And I will include that as a lead-in line so that if you leave the, the subject central and nothing else, it can be quite boring. So um, by including something like a lead-in line or just stretching the perspectives by going lower to the ground, um, that can really make the most of a wide-angle lens like the 8 to 25 f4 Pro. Now, I actually came up to this location to shoot this massive tower on the top of a hill. I'm gonna try and pronounce the name of this place now. Apologies to everybody in Denmark for getting it wrong. Himmelberget, or something like that. My pronunciation isn't that great. Denmark is a low-lying country. This is one of the few high points, and the panoramic views are absolutely amazing. But while I was shooting the tower, I turned around, saw the forest view, and this, it's getting late in the sort of afternoon now, it started to the evening, and there's this beautiful mist rising from the forest. Um, so I swapped to the 40 to 150, obviously that gives me a maximum of equivalent of 300 mil. I'm just getting the backlight of the mist rising from the forest, I think will produce some beautiful frames. Um, and that was just a bonus, you know, I didn't plan that. It just happens and <laughs> driving in here, it was absolutely raining so heavily and all of a sudden the rain just stopped, the sun came out just for a moment and that is landscape photography.
two other things I want to talk about when I'm using this lens. First of all, it's um, the other two lenses that I've got, which are f4, which is the 12 to 45, and the 40 to 150 f4 pros. Um, they are cool, but the one problem they do have, they don't have any clutch, so that you can simply just go from EF to manual focus like that. Obviously, the 8 to 25 does, and it's such a handy thing. Sometimes the focus might not be spot on, usually is. But if you just want to sort of have that more precision, you can just simply hit the clutch and go into manual focus so easily. I really enjoy it. Secondly, I've been using um, high res mode. So the camera will shoot a bunch of images, merge them together into one single file. So that you've got a really high res file, 50 megapixels, I believe. And that's, you know, one of the criticisms about this system is that you can't shoot high resolution images. Well, with that mode, you can. And, you know, I'll put some images on the screen now and you can take a look at the detail and you can be the judge. Just heading back to the car so the audio not, might not be very good, just using the GoPro. Um, I thought this place would be really busy. I'm literally the only person here, and like, been here for about three hours, I've seen one other person. Um, so that's, I guess, a bonus in one way, but this place is really eerie. Um, and I don't know, I sort of get a bit sort of nervous when I'm taking pictures in places like that, but when I'm the only person there. Uh, but yeah, nice place. Okay, welcome to day two, and it's a bit colder today, uh, but that's all right. And I'm shooting on the GoPro because I've come to this amazing location, and it's this fantastic uh, lighthouse. Um, it's really, really cool. I love the red and white color design of it. I think that's going to come out really well against the blue sky. Now, we're talking about blue sky. I'm not sure how long that blue sky is going to last because it is changeable today, to say the least. Um, the weather is not looking good, but we will press on and persevere with this vlog. Um, I'll see how it goes. I might head to a second location further north in Denmark. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes today. But yeah, so let's crack on. Let's take some photos and see what we can do. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. I've got the OM5 set up on the tripod because I want to do a long exposure. I'm not sure how long these conditions will last for, but the strong winds are blowing the clouds past the lighthouse. Now, with tall subjects, I always tend to go for a portrait format. The light is a bit changeable. It's quite bright, even though it's quite a cold day. Um, so I've got a Lee Little Stopper on the front of the 40 to 150 lens, and um, that wasn't quite enough to get me the time that I needed for the shutter speed. I think uh, it basically was giving me just about three seconds. I need a bit longer than that. So I've actually activated the live ND shooting mode on the OM5. And that's bumped the shutter speed down to 10 seconds. So that's given me enough time now to capture the clouds as they blow past in the background. So we'll take another shot now see how that looks yeah that's looking really really good now it's not like a big stopper it's not giving me that huge streaked effect but it's enough to add interest to the background and um, add some interest to the background of the scene and just make it look a lot cooler okay so probably the last shot here before we head off to the next location got the lighthouse in portrait uh, format again but 
there's a little dip in the sand here where some of the water has become trapped. And I'm going to use this to create a reflection of the lighthouse. Um, so I've gone as low down as possible on the wide angle 8 to 25 lens. And let's see how this looks. I can see in my LCD what's going on, focusing on the lighthouse. I can't get the full reflection, but there is enough there to make it look interesting enough. So I think that works pretty well. This location has been a real bonus, if I'm honest with you. Um, the weather this morning was terrible. I wasn't 100% sure if, this look, if I could even get to this location, but I did a lot of research on Google Maps before I came, and I thought it was worth the chance, so I'm really pleased. I mean, to be honest, I probably could spend longer here, but there's a lot more of Denmark I want to see, so I've got plenty of shots in the bag. Let's head off to the next location. Okay, so slight change of plan. There's a massive weather front coming in, and I mean huge. Um, I don't mind bad weather, it brings some good results sometimes, but there's been warnings on the, on the app, weather app as well, uh, strong gusts, all of that sort of stuff. So we're gonna play it slightly safe. We're gonna get some shots in this lovely harbor that I've found, and then we're gonna head into the city of Aarhus, and we can see what we can find there. So this trip is basically half landscape, half city um, and I think I've brought the right lenses for both but we'll get some shots of this harbour and then we'll head out into the city try and avoid this biblical downfall uh, that is um, about to happen so yeah let's avoid the rain and crack on Yep. Looks like we just beat the rain. Ugh. Yep, that's landscape photography for you. Never mind, I have some Pringles. Every cloud and everything. Yep, that is the biblical rain starting to come down now. I would not want to be on the water right now. That would not be cool. So this is what I love about Denmark. It has so many interesting places. Yeah, not allowed that way, I think. What are you? Oh, you are. Score. Oh. Get right to the top. Oh, it's going to be windy. Sorry about the audio. Let's check it out. <sighs> Lighthouses are so cool, aren't they? So we've got something else here as well. We've got um, some World War II defences over that way, and over that way, and over that way. And obviously guarding this bridge and this inlet here. Come and have a look at this. So the bottom bit of this beautiful lighthouse. posh toilet anybody and it's free to use in London that would be like ridiculously expensive it would be like a pound probably oh it's closing oh crikey there we go right that's the thing about Denmark every single nearby has amazing facilities 
toilets. It's just such a clean, lovely country, which I really appreciate. All right, let's get cracking. <laughs> 